Very soon, the Summer Olympics will grace our lives once again with Tokyo 2020. Nations around the world will battle it out for who leads the medal table at the end of the Games. The United States will be hoping to follow on from Rio de Janeiro in 2016 and take the top spot again. But just how much is Team USA spending to achieve this? Today, we're going to examine that question. We'll also see how much money their athletes receive as well as their financial struggles. We'll then compare these figures to a couple of other nations. So, let's get started. As a way to add incentive for their athletes, a number of countries offer a cash prize to those that make the podium in their respective sports. During 2016, the US provided $25,000 for a gold medal, $15,000 for silver, and $10,000 for bronze. This was actually the first increase in the awards since 2002. However, at the time, the athletes in the States weren't able to keep the full amount as there was a victory tax which meant that they could get taxed up to 39.6% of their winnings. American swimming legend Michael Phelps won five gold medals and one silver during Rio. This meant that he should have received $140,000. Instead, a maximum of $55,440 could have gone to the state, meaning his winnings would be $84,560 after tax. The victory tax was amended in 2018. If an athlete has an annual gross income of less than $1 million, they don't pay the tax. When the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang during 2018 was approaching, the U.S. changed their prize amounts. Gold medals earned $37,500, silver $22,500, and bronze got $15,000. Singapore made news by offering the biggest prize with $1 million for gold, silver got $500,000, and bronze received $250,000. Only a select few of U.S. Olympians have an overflowing bank account. Most athletes struggle to train, travel, and even afford basic living costs. Some even need a part-time job to tide them over before representing their country on the international stage. Back in 2012, former U.S. speed skater Eric Flame estimated that his career cost him $250,000. A lot of that cost was paid for by his parents. Some parents have even declared bankruptcy after trying to fund their child's Olympic ambitions. In 2016, ESPN examined the training of U.S. rower Megan Calmo and discovered she was living just above the poverty line. They found in 2014 she was bringing in $800 per month before taxes. When she returned from the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, she was told the U.S. rowing budget had been used up. So, her monthly stipend was then $0 for the rest of the year. In 2014, her average monthly stipend was $833. Megan worked out by training 36 hours per week. That meant she was making just $5.78 an hour. Often, it's up to the athletes to pay for their necessary equipment they use in their discipline. Maya Lawrence competed in fencing for the States during London 2012. She disclosed to Forbes that she was spending $20,000 per year on training, equipment, camps, and competitions. During the same Summer Games, U.S. swimmer Missy Lawrence and her parents spent $100,000 on her training for that year alone. While in 2018, according to Time Magazine, elite figure skaters have annual fees amounting between $35,000 and $50,000. The costumes alone can go up to $10,000 without sponsorship. Due to the delay of Tokyo 2020 attributed to global events, the International Olympic Committee announced last year they were providing a further $25 million in funding. $15 million went towards 1,600 athletes from 185 less well-funded countries, and $10 million was available for national Olympic bodies for additional costs for travel and accommodation. The delay also drastically affected the game's budget by increasing it by 22%. In 2019, the Tokyo 2020 budget was $12.6 billion. By the end of 2020, it was $15.4 billion for the Japanese capital. The postponement even greatly affected the funding for the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee, also known as USOPC. During 2020, the committee was expected to receive a share of $200 million that it gets every other year for the U.S. broadcasting rights that NBC Universal pays the International Olympic Committee. Usually, the USOPC distributes around $100 million per year. 
$13 million of which goes to the athletes via stipends, while more than $75 million is allocated to national bodies for various sports. To ease this loss, the USOPC, who usually doesn't receive any governmental funding, asked Congress for a $200 million relief package. It was rejected, leaving athletes scrambling on what to do. If the games in Tokyo were canceled, estimates believe the USOPC would lose between three to four billion dollars. Recently, The Guardian examined Australia and their Olympic desire. They found out that the Australian government will spend around 350 million Australian dollars on sport this year. The Australian Institute of Sport usually hands out around $150 million towards athletes, towards both the Summer and Winter Olympics and Paralympics. The Guardian found that if the country was to match their medal tally during Rio 2016 with 8 gold, 11 silver and 10 bronze, for Tokyo 2020, the cost would be around 16 million per medal. During 2019, the Australian Olympics Committee had set aside around $21.5 million for their team whilst in Tokyo. Over the whole of 2019, the USOPC had provided athletes and national governing bodies of sports $83 million worth of grants. Medal winners for Australia can be expected to get $20,000 for gold, $15,000 for silver, and $10,000 for bronze. Great Britain's medal incentives work a little differently than the other countries we mentioned, as they don't have any. Instead, during 2016, the country provided athletes that had reached the podium up to $37,000 annually for personal and sporting expenses. These athletes could then get a further sum of cash to go towards coaching and training fees. This was between $47,000 to $79,000, meaning a top athlete could bring in up to $116,000 per year for expenses. According to the New York Times, this meant that each medal that Team GB won in Rio that being 67, cost about $6.5 million on average. UK Sports is the body that funds Olympic and Paralympic hopefuls. They receive most of their funding from the national lottery, but a portion comes from the UK government. For Tokyo, Team GB were allocated funding of 345 million pounds, around $426 million at the time back in 2016. In 2019, an additional 50 million pounds, around $62 million then, was given to UK Sports, taking Team GB's total to 395 million pounds, around $547 million for the Olympics and Paralympics, giving us a yearly average from 2016 to 2020 of 98.75 million pounds or around $136.7 million. This extra boost increased the overall spending for Rio 2016 for 347 million pounds, around $480 million. During 2016, USOPC announced in their annual report that they had allocated $84.7 million in just that year alone. Here's our final fact finish. One of the biggest spenders for the Olympics was in 2004 when Athens hosted the Summer Games. It reportedly cost the Greek capital around 9 billion euros or $11.6 billion at the time. That's nearly double the original budget of 4.6 billion euros or around $6 billion. According to some experts, the Olympic massive costs contributed to Greece's financial crisis, which began in 2009. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.